know, my pick down name is the VNL trucker, and you know, VNL is basically a series of um, a Volvo, you know, Volvo that have VNRs, okay. VNL, okay. VNL stuff like that. So my name is just related to a truck. That's all. Okay, okay, yeah, that's what's up because I, you know, I'm I'm putting. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. What the f happened to you, man? Y'all used to be beautiful. All right, KT in the building. Yo, yo. Yo, yo. So, uh, KT, Illinois. That That's where you from? Illinois? Chicago? Where were you from? Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, Chicago, yep. Okay, okay. So let's uh let's get a little background about yourself. Where where you know, where you know what you was doing before you got into trucking and everything. Man, before trucking, um before I actually even got into trucking, I was looking into it two years before I actually like found a school and everything, but I was job hopping, dude, warehouse to warehouse, behind registers, selling Italian ice in the corner. I was doing administrative work. I was doing everything. So trucking was just, it was an eye catcher for sure. Man, this sound, this sound like a lot of, you know, sound like a lot of these uh, drivers out here that jumped into the, uh, into the industry, you know, from where they came from and everything. That's sort of like, sort of like me, you know, but. You know, uh, job hopping, trying to figure out what to do for the fam and all like that. How how long ago did you um, how long ago did you get your license? How how long you had it for? I had my license. It actually made eight months. I got it at the end of November. On paper, it will be eight months. But to be honest, dude, I had my license for like three years. I'm not gonna lie to you. I know so much stuff about the industry that. On paper, when I tell a company, but yeah, eight months for sure. I, I'm kind of confused now. You you said you had your, so you had your CDLs for three years mm -hmm. prior to being on on paper. Okay. Ed, ed, explain that to me. So when I say like eight months, meaning like on paper, if I was get pulled over, or if you look document wise, oh, this person had their CDL at the end of 2021. But like I said, I've studied this industry two, three years before I even got into it. So, yes, trucking is very volatile to change. So things that were two, three years ago is not the same now. But I'm saying, like, I know how to get started with the CD. I know what grants is out there. I know get your, get all your endorsements, you know, before you start looking for a company. Like, little stuff like that. That's what I'm saying. Like, the knowledge that I have starting out is not a person that would be eight months in. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Or three months in, whatever. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. I I got you. I got you. You did your, <laughs> you you did your research for the last yes, three sir. years before you decided to come into this uh come into this industry, and I commend you for that. That's that's cool because see, a lot of people just jump head first in into the industry without yeah. knowing the ins and outs and the, you know the intricate parts of it. But you you know three years. Yeah. You know, while you were studying, researching, I, I'll give you that. That's what's up. All right. Did you, out of your research, uh, what what you do? You you went to school to get your license or you went to a trucking company to get your license? Um, I went to a trucking um, school, like a private school, I guess, you, if you will. Um, I got my CDL through, the, through a grant. It's called WIOA, W-I-O-A. And it's through unemployment, so no, you don't have to be on unemployment to get this grant either. Um, it just it's just through the unemployment office, but yeah, they pay for my entire CDL, they pay for all my endorsements, so it literally cost me zero dollars to get my CDL. And I think the school already was five grand. So. And and all yeah. of this, all of this is in Chicago, Illinois. Oh yeah, yeah, it's other states that have this grant too. It might not be called WIA, but you can just call your unemployment office and hey, I'm looking for a CDL grant. And then they'll guide you from there. But definitely in Illinois, Chicago, you know, whatever city in in Illinois, it's called WIA. You can get a grant. Do you figure that you know maybe I can go to a trucking company and get my CDL versus getting my CDL privately? Why did you choose privately over then going to an actual trucking company to get your CDLs? 
Well, going through a trucking company, it has its pros and cons, just like getting your CEO privately, it has its pros and cons. But I was just close to actually sign up for KLLM. That was the first company I even looked at. They were trying to pay me 24 cents a mile, which now this is three, four years ago. So that sounds low, but even then that was a little low to me. Um, but if you think about it, if you go to a trucking company and get your CDL, not only will you have that experience to kind of back you up, but you, it's an exchange. Okay. So they are paying you in exchange for you working for them. That's the good part about that. So if you go to a company and you get your CDL through them, you it's an exchange. So you're working for them and they're giving you a license. So that's good and bad because not only do you have experience, but you kind of didn't pay nothing. They're, they're paying you. But if you didn't like it three months in, now you have to pay them back in order to leave because you signed a year contract, six month contract, however long the contract is. So I decided to get mine privately because now when I'm done with school, I can go to just about any company that will take me, you know. Right. So that's exactly. why I So eight months, eight months in, what, what have you noticed? Because you said it was three years that you were studying, but now you're eight months, you're, you're eight months in. What, what was the difference now? I mean, now that you got your CDLs versus when you was uh, just researching. Um, two things. The first thing I could say is the pay. A lot of people think when they come in the truck and they gonna clear this amount of money or they think they gonna be rich. I'm gonna keep it raw. They think they just come, come out here and they check it's gonna be big. Um, when I was in training, I got a base pay no matter what. I mean, it wasn't any higher than that number and it was never any lower. It was a flat, flat pay for two months. So I told myself my first year is not to get paid and for experience. Your, your first year is to learn. It's not to make money. Now, if you can make money while you're learning, that's perfect, but I'm not here to make money. So the dollar signs was the first thing. You know, be humble your first year. And then secondly, the backing. You're in, I, I drive a sleeper. But um, the company that I'm at, we have different accounts that we can help. So I might go to another account and they might have day cabs. Well, they have day cabs because, yeah, their drivers go home every day. But some of these backing situations you have to go to, I mean, you're dealing with, you, you need a day cab to do it. I've done it with a sleeper and it was not easy. It was almost impossible. So just going to different places and backing in different you know, being in different backing situations and learning how to be calm, getting out looking. Um, Cause in my, my company, I don't just pull 53s. I pull 53s, 48s, 28s. I pull all different size trailers. So I have to learn to adapt to my trailer. So the money in the backing situations are the two things that I've really um, noticed. Are you still with the same company that you uh, chose uh, eight months ago or, or are you at a different company? Yeah, I'm with the same company. I actually switched accounts, but I came back. So I'm on a uh, dog food account, but I was with Walmart for like a month or two. But then I came back to the dog food account, but I've still been at the same company the full eight years. I mean, full eight months, sorry. After you get your license and everything, what was the research behind you finding the, finding the company that was good for you where you at right now? The thing that helped me and a lot of people, they do not do this. I don't think they know how to is when you're applying for jobs, they're not interviewing you, you're interviewing them. You have to be realistic. What do I want my home time to be? What is the pay? What equipment do you guys have? What is the benefits package? Do you have 401k, et cetera, et cetera. I'm looking for different things on my list. And if you can check off five of those six, I'm interested. If you're only checking off two of those six, I gotta move on. So the company that I'm with, I'm gonna disclose the name. They're called NFI, National for Incorporated. They checked off everything on my list. My home time's good. My pay is good. My equipment is cool. It, you know, it works for me. Somebody else might come here and they might not want to do this. So I just, you know, I write down a list, ask them to clear the questions that they can verify. Cool. If they can't, well, then I got to move on. Was NFI was your first choice or was that like your second or third choice? NFI actually was my second. I was trying to go with J.B. Hunt. But um, the positions kept filling up actually very quickly. By the time I was done with the drug test, and she already told me that that spot was filled. So NFI actually called me a week later and 
Every day for the last 10 years, Loretta there has been giving me a large black coffee. Today she gives me a large black coffee, only it's got sugar in it. A lot of sugar. I just came back to complain. Now you boys put those guns down. They already had a trainer ready for me. So the recruiter at JB Helm was like, hey, just keep my number whenever you want to come over or if you're interested. And yeah, that's how I got started here. Now, you know what? I, I don't know what I was thinking. When I seen your TikToks and started following you, your your name on TikTok is, is VL, VNL Trucker. I straight up mm -hmm. thought that that meant you was with V, I mean, VL Trucking. What I mean, oh. <laughs> that's that's what I that that's what I thought. I, I don't know I don't know why I thought that, but I, I looked at it and I was like, oh okay, well, she's with VL Trucking, and I'm thinking like the the reason I reached out to you because you know you had a you had an interesting TikTok that caught my eye, and I wanted to you know bring you on the show and talk. But when I yeah. noticed VL Trucking, I was like, oh okay, well she's with VL Trucking, and maybe we got some. We got some stories behind that, but but you're not you're you're actually not with VL trucking though. No, no, no. Um I've changed my name on TikTok a lot of times, but uh, I'm leaving it here now. My TikTok name is the VNL Trucker, and you know, VNL is basically a series of um of Volvo, you know, Volvo that have VNRs. Okay. VNL. okay. VNL stuff like that. So my name is just related to a truck. That's all. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's what's up because I, you know, I'm I'm putting I'm putting Chicago, Illinois, VNL, <laughs> Russian, <laughs> European. You know what I'm yep. saying? The black ops. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, and I'm thinking like, oh, well, here she is. Like, okay, well, we we got some stories to tell. That's what's up. All right. Yeah. All right. That's that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> Uh, again, you know, I, me, I'm not a fan of the app and I, and, and I, and I say that to everybody that I meet, but I do come across some interesting people and I do meet a lot of, uh, interesting, uh, uh, truck drivers from this app because it looks like since this app has been, you know, has been popular, it's, it's, it's like every last truck driver and a mama decide to come on this app mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. i mean it's like yeah. it just pops up from nowhere like bro i've been on youtube for over 15 years and i've been and i've been driving for like the last seven and i met some interesting content creators on youtube and the trucking side but boy yeah. when tiktok came along i mean it's like it, it's like it's, it's like the new zello like it, this this is where all the truckers congregate now, and I'm like, okay. And I, I I said to myself, I said I I know the reason why. You know, a lot of a mm -hmm. lot of us that that been on YouTube that's been doing content creating for a long time, I know the reason why because TikTok is just so easy. The the biggest creator. You know, she she would say that it's a lot of work, but me, I don't think it's a lot of work. I mean, all it is is just turn on your camera and just talk or say whatever you want to say yeah. and just make it interesting. Yeah. Why was TikTok that platform for you, though? Well, it's funny because I used to hate TikTok. Like, <laughs> I would be with my friends, and you, you know how it is. You, you get sucked into the scrolling after you done one video, next video, next video, next video. And I would just hear it all the time. I'm like, oh, cut, cut TikTok off, bro. It's just too much. It's one video after the next, because you know they're not that long. I didn't know TikTok was for everything. Like it's a platform for you can find anything on TikTok. Mm, I mean, I I I I will agree with you on that point. I will say any and every genre. Is on TikTok. You got the the LBG, the LBG, L, you, the alphabet. You got the BB dip, the BBWs. You got all of it. You, all of it. All of it. All of it. So, and, 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 and see, with YouTube, people might think it's harder because it's longer editing. 
with TikTok, you don't have to have long edits. I mean, these videos go up to 60 seconds. They might go longer than that. But YouTube, if you really want a strong stream, talk about something that's interesting, yes, but you got to be careful because you don't want your videos to be too long. But now they have videos on YouTube where they're short. So you can make stories, which is fine. But people go on YouTube for specific content and they come to TikTok for specific content. Some mm -hmm. people want to scroll, some people want to watch, you know. Mm -hmm. That's that. Oh, that that is a good way into putting it, man. Some people want to <laughs> scroll and some people want to watch. You want to watch, you come to YouTube, yeah. you want to scroll, you go over to TikTok. Yep. That that's what's up. That, and yep. I'm, I'm, yep. you know what? I'm I'm going to keep that I'm I'm going to keep that right here with me. I'm I'm going to take that with me. So, so now on somebody asked me, so what's the difference between YouTube and and TikTok again? If you want to scroll, <laughs> you go to TikTok, you want or if you want to watch you go to YouTube. That's what's up, man. That's yeah. what's up. KT, you you made this video right here uh, when you were sitting in your car and you was explaining. And it, it's facts in what you said, too. Mm -hmm. You you were saying that, you know, people think that when you're a truck driver, you 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 making all this kind of money, this buku kind of money and all like that. And everybody be coming up to you with a handout. And everything. Go, yeah. go, go back and tell me a little bit of your thought process when you was when you was making that uh, did talk about truckers and money. Um, you know, like I said before, how it came down to the finances when I first got into trucking. Um, <laughs> you know, a lot of people they just think when you gonna come out here, they think everything that glitter is gold and it's not you there is a thing called broke truck drivers people don't believe it but there is a thing called broke truck drivers that is a thing um they think just because you drive these nice trucks or just because you drive a truck you have money but that's false because all these companies they pay a little different this one might pay by the load this one might pay percentage this one might be 1099 this one might be a company driver so many variables that people who do not drive trucks, they don't know. Just like people who don't drive trucks, they don't know. We got four clocks running. They think we're all just out here hourly on the steering wheel. So when I made that video, I'm trying to put into, put this, paint this picture for people to understand that not everybody that, that does this. Yes, trucking is a very lucrative industry. It can be. Um, how about a smoothie? What's in that? Smoothie's a juice drink. We want coffee. Buddy, relax. But it can also be detrimental too. Owner operators. I'm not owner operator, but I know a few. Yeah, you telling me you're clearing 6K a week, but the same amount of time that it took you to gain that money is the same amount of time you can lose that money. People don't understand that. So I just try to explain to people that, you know, you got to understand that everything that glitter, it ain't gold. We, we out here working just like you guys. So that, that was just my thought process. What do you think about, what, what, you know, again, going back to TikTok, what, what do you think about the drivers that's on there that's that's over here uh, sugarcoating it? Like they, they saying that they that they making all this money, they clearing six figures and making the industry like this is the best thing since sliced bread, come on in and all like that without telling, you know, without telling the real. I mean, let's be for real. 99% of the drivers out here ain't making six figures. <laughs> of course not. Oh, no. <laughs> you know. Of course not. It is it, it, one word that'll sum up that whole thing that you just said, that whole sentence. Ego. Underline ego. That's what that is because they will sit up here and tell you, get your own truck, get your own authority, do this, do that. They're not going to tell you about insurance. They're not going to tell you about IFTA. They aren't going to tell you about taxes. They aren't going to tell you about breakdown. It's anybody can tell you good things. Good things give good ratings. People see nice trucks. They, they, they follow you. They see how much money you make and they follow you. They hear the good things, they follow you. When you start talking about your downfall and how Owner operators got to deal with these brokers to get paid and X, Y, Z. They don't want to hear that. They want to just see the nice, pretty truck. They don't care about how much you spent on the truck, so how you, much insurance you pay on the truck. So you agree with me that some of these drivers out here are cosplaying. They 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 of cosplaying. Course. They they, well, they putting on they putting on the costume. Trucking. Yes, it would not be trucking without it. It's smoke and mirrors. I'm not saying everybody's like that, but if we're going to be honest, it's an ego thing. You drive a truck, of course you're gonna gloat it. 
you know. What do you think about some of these drivers out here that be that 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 be coming out with their hand out? And 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 this is what I mean because like majority of you know go, again going back to TikTok, not all drivers, mm-hmm. but I I notice a lot of you know a lot of male and female drivers, more so the females have their cash app in their profile in their truck driver. So I'm kind of wondering. Like, what am I giving to? Because if you say, if you say I'm giving to you because of your content over here on TikTok, mm-hmm. I don't think I want to do that. Now, if you was on YouTube making valuable content that might be a little bit of value into what I'm doing or what I'm looking for, then yeah, I might, I, I might slip you a tip. But over here on TikTok right. is 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 more so look at me and you know donate to me. But you're a truck driver out there making a potential 50, 60, 70,000 K a year. Bro, you should be giving me right. some money. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you think about um, that? Now with that, that's subjective because like I said, everybody get paid, gets paid differently. So he might make it seem like he's clearing 80 grand a year, but he's probably only clearing 60 or clearing 50, whatever. Nobody will ever know how much a person is really taking home. It's not about how much you're making. It's about how much you're taking home. That's the first thing and foremost. Mm. Second thing, the reason why I say it's subjective is because it depends on your content. Now, I followed a few pages where in trucking, they explain to you what airlines are. They explain to you if you have a leak. They explain to you what to do if you blow a fear tire. Now, people like that, yeah, I don't have no problem with donating to you because you're giving out knowledge. You're informing people. But when you're just making funny videos, I mean, anybody can do that, dude. You know, anybody can sit up here and have a big following stream. So when it comes to the cash apps and the PayPals and the Venmos, um, Venmo? They can do their thing, me personally. Venmo? Oh, what, yeah. Venmo? What the hell is a Venmo? Because I know about the Cash App and the PayPal. Venmo? Venmo is another, yeah, it's another pay, uh, payable service. It's like PayPal. Send money. <sighs> I guess Not I'm cool. old because, like I said, that it took me, <laughs> hell, it took me a long time to get used to Cash App. Like, I, I was cool yeah. with PayPal. Yeah. You know, I was cool with PayPal. Yeah. And being that I'm a YouTuber, you can... You know, you can, you know, super, you know, super chat or, or there's a thank right, you, but right. there's a thank you button on my videos and everything, but Venmo? Yeah. God. Yeah. Damn. Venmo's another one. Oof, I don't, Venmo. I don't put those in my bio though. I, I got you. I, I got you. I just, until I get bigger, maybe I might put it in there, but see, if I was to ever put any type of payable service in my bio, that is not a source of income. That's just anything extra if you want to donate. Mm-hmm. But right now, I'm just a normal truck driver, just like everybody else. I just post funny content and informative content. That's that's about it. So NFI, uh, eight months in Chicagoland. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, you told me that your first choice was JB Hunt, and I I know JB Hunt is in Chicago. How I mean, how did you come right. across? Uh, are are you a regional driver, local driver? What I mean, what are you? Yeah, I'm I'm regional Monday through uh, Monday through Friday. Oh, okay, 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 okay. And there there's a terminal for NFI in 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 Chicago land. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, preferably by the Springs area, but yeah, in Chicago. There's a lot of NFI trucks, especially at the at the um, I think it's the Target. If I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken, it's the tar it, it it's a Target Depot, but it, it don't look like it's a Target Depot, but it's right over there off of Industrial Road. Oh my mm-hmm. God. I think uh I I fifty eight it's down that long stretch of highway that you get off and then you go down that long stretch of road where at sign is at. And then you go around, go, yeah. yeah, go around and you didn't yeah. I, I see a lot of NFI trucks over there. So while I'm tripping, 
<laughs> okay, okay, that's what's up. KT, man, thank you very much for jumping on here and uh, chopping it up with me. I really enjoyed myself, and I enjoy your content, too. You got some informative content over there, but you got some uh, interesting stuff over there, too. All right, guys, you know the best conversation starts here on the Lockout Men podcast show. If y'all guys want to jump in, y'all know what to do, too. One six six zero zero. 2090. Jump on, join the conversation like me and my guest right here, Miss KT Trucker. You stay safe out there. <laughs> yes, sir. You as well. Thank you for having me. <laughs>